Hi everyone, this is Jo from Math Tutor Me. Today we're doing some Pythagoras' theorem and we are looking at Pythagorean triads. Now, maybe you haven't heard of a triad before, but I'm sure you've heard tri used in lots of different words like triangle or triathlon or even tripod. Tri just means three. So when we say Pythagorean triad, we are just looking for three sides that follow Pythagoras' theorem's law. So if the three sides of a triangle obey Pythagoras' theorem, then the three numbers are called a Pythagorean triad. Sometimes you'll see Pythagorean triads written like this in some curly brackets and you've got your three numbers representing your three sides inside the brackets. The numbers will be in ascending order so the first two numbers will be your shorter sides and the third number, the last number, will always be your hypotenuse. So let's have a look at these questions. What we want to do in most of these questions is to prove whether or not something is a Pythagorean triad or not. So that's question one here. Do the numbers 9, 12 and 15 form a Pythagorean triad? To do that, what you do is you take your two shorter sides, these two, the 9 and the 12, and we do our Pythagoras' theorem to see if we get this number for our hypotenuse. So my formula for the hypotenuse, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Let's use our two shorter sides, 9 squared plus 12 squared. And we'll type that in, 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 225. Okay, we want to get rid of the squared, so we square root the 225 which means, what do I get? Oh, 15. Okay, so I got, when I did my Pythagoras' theorem, I got the same number. That means I can write a little conclusion here, therefore, 9, 12, 15 is a Pythagorean Pythagorean triad. Alright, let's do it again. This time instead of having the brackets, I have a triangle. But the question is still the same. Use Pythagoras' theorem to determine whether the triangle is right angled or not. If it's a right angle, then I should be able to use the two smaller sides and I should get the third larger side. So let's do c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Take my two shorter sides, 4 squared plus 10 squared. Let's calculate that, 4 squared plus 10 squared equals 116. And so then I'll need to square root that. And I get 10.77. Well, that's not the same. That's not 13. So therefore, this is not a right angle triangle. Okay, because if it was a right angle triangle, I should have got... 10.77 as my hypotenuse. Alright, one more question here. Number 3. The formula 3x, 4x and 5x will produce a Pythagorean triad for any counting number. We want to use this formula to complete the triad 21, missing number here, 35. Well, the 21 is in the position of the 3x. So that means that 3x has to be equal to 21. 
Okay, if I solve that little equation, I will divide the three. Okay, and that will tell me that x is equal to seven. That means that I can use that to find my missing number here. So I could do 4x, that's the position of my missing number, that will be 4 times 7, because x is 7, which equals 28. So that means that my triad is 21, 28, and 35. Now I didn't actually use the 35 at all. We could check though, if I had 5x is equal to 35, if I divide this by 5, I will get 7 as well. So it didn't matter if I used the 3x equals 21 or the 5x, I would get the same answer. Alright, so here is a few short questions for you to have a try. Pause the video, have a go, and then we'll go through the answers together. Question 1. Do the numbers 5, 11 and 13 form a Pythagorean triad? Well, let's take our first two numbers and put them in our formula. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals 5 squared plus 11 squared. Well, let's calculate that. 5 squared plus 11 squared equals... 146. To get rid of the squared, I need to square root. And I get 12.1 to one decimal place. I had a 13 here in the bracket, so it is not a Pythagorean triad. Therefore, not a Pythagorean triad. Hopefully you got that. Let's have a look at question two. Here we have our formula again, like in the practice. The formula 3x plus 3x, 4x and 5x will produce a Pythagorean triad for any counting number. Use this formula to complete the third, complete the triad, the third number here. So I can use either of these to find the third number. Let's just stick with the first one, the 3x. 3x is equal to 24. So I want to divide by the 3 to get the x by itself. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So I just need to put the 8 in here with my 5 to find my third number. So 5x is going to be 5 times 8, which is 40. So therefore my triad is 24, 32, 40. How'd you go? Okay, time for you to go and practice, practice. Do as many questions as you can find. And I will see you next time for my next math video. Bye for now.